Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. Today, I was not planning on filming, but I've had this puff pastry in my freezer since before Thanksgiving. I had been planning to share a vegan Wellington recipe, and I never got a chance, so I thought, why not film that today? And I'm just gonna be using, for the, the filling, for the actual like roast in the center, a vegan meatloaf recipe that I've been making for years and years. Super easy to make. Then we're gonna be wrapping it in this puff pastry this is dairy-free. It's by Pepperidge Farm. It's available, I think, at most just regular grocery stores in the frozen section. So I've defrosted this in the fridge overnight, and this is such an easy recipe. And you can even just use the lentil loaf if you want to make like a healthy main dish. I'm going to heat my cast iron pan over medium-ish heat. I'm going to add a little bit of oil. I like to cook with oil when I'm using cast iron just to keep it, you know, seasoned and greasy <laughs> but uh, i just got this like a month or two ish ago and it's like by far my new favorite cooking vessel if you season it properly it's just perfection so i've got for my vegetables just like the classic celery carrots i've got some red onion and quite a bit of garlic i'm gonna add all those things in here i'm also adding this is a full eight ounce carton of cremini mushrooms and i just rinsed them and chopped them really coarsely and we're going to cook these for kind of a long time because mushrooms let out a lot of water. And the key for your puff, pa puff, per puff pastry coming out nice and crispy um, and not soggy is to make sure that your ingredients are dry. So we want to cook out all the extra liquid in these. My veggies are starting to soften a bit. They still need to saute for quite a while. But I'm going to add in about two tablespoons of tomato paste. This is just going to give it a really nice, deep, savory flavor. And if you add in the tomato paste at this point, instead of just when you're mixing the lentil loaf together, it has a little bit of an opportunity to caramelize. Now what I've already done earlier this morning is cooked some just regular green lentils. I boiled them in vegetable broth and then I drained them. So I've been sauteing the vegetables for a total of like 10 minutes maybe and starting to take on some nice color. And what's most important is there's no extra liquid in the pan. I'm gonna turn the heat off. We're gonna transfer this to a nice big mixing bowl and we're just gonna throw in all of our other ingredients and form our lentil loaf meat dough. You can see the vegetables have shrunk quite a bit since we cooked them, and this recipe is gonna make enough for just one nine by five loaf pan. But this recipe is really easy to scale because it's just, you don't even have to be that precise with this, but I am gonna leave um, a link to a recipe card with more precise measurements because I know some of you do like to measure things. I'm gonna throw in our lentils. Here I have a mixture of raw pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, and I soaked these for a couple of hours, gave them a quick rinse, and then I just chopped them coarsely. You could do the same with walnuts or pecans. I've, I've done with walnuts before and really enjoy it. And what this does, they just plump up a little bit when you soak them, and they add a nice richness, a nice kind of like meaty texture, a nice contrast to the lentils, which can be a little bit mushy. Adding those, and if you want this to be a lower fat version, feel free to just add more lentils. I'm adding a little bit of nutritional yeast just to make it a little bit more savory. Then I have some vegan Worcestershire sauce. This is a brand new bottle. I usually have the Annie's brand, but I wanted to try something new. This is vegan friendly. And I'm gonna add just about like a tablespoon of this. Need to open it first though. <laughs> to bind everything together, I've got a flax egg. This is just flaxseed meal that I've been soaking in water. It gets really nice and gelatinous like this. You can use your favorite, like if you have a vegan egg or Bob's Red Mill, I think makes an egg substitute as well. You could use those. And then I'm pretty lazy when it comes to seasoning, you may have noticed by now. So you could add like any of your favorite herbs at this point. I think parsley would be great in this if you're a parsley fan. Thyme, oregano, rosemary. I'm just going to be using poultry seasoning, which is basically a blend of all those herbs. And I smell it and I just always immediately think like Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. About a tablespoon of this. I'm gonna add a lot of black pepper because I like it. So I'm combining all these ingredients. It's gonna be really moist at this point. It won't stick together very well, but I'm gonna adjust the flavor first based on this. Add a little bit more salt and pepper if necessary. Definitely a little bit more salt for me. Kind of depends on whether the vegetable broth that you used for your lentils was low sodium. Okay, I'm satisfied with the flavor. Now we're going to add a couple more ingredients to bind it together. Panko breadcrumbs. Or if you want to go the more whole foods route, you could use some cooked quinoa or maybe some rice. Start with about a half a cup. I'm going to add a little bit of flour as well. You can use really any kind you like, all-purpose, brown rice. I am a big fan of chickpea flour, so a couple tablespoons of that in here. 
and let's mix it up. Oh, you could also totally use like quick oats instead of breadcrumbs if you like. I've done that many, many times before. So use your judgment at this point. You want it to be firm but not dry. Now you want it to stick together in your palm, um, kind of like wet sand, hold its shape when you squeeze it. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more chickpea flour, actually. So this is pretty much the texture I'm looking for. <laughs> Very uh, appetizing, I know. But um, at this point, you can actually just press this into a loaf pan that you've greased or lined with parchment paper if you're doing it oil-free um, and cook it like this, but I'm going to go the extra step, make it very festive, and wrap it in some puff pastry. Let us unbox our puff pastry now. You actually want to cook this at a pretty high temperature, so I'm preheating my oven to 425 right now. This comes with two sheets. I've got a loaf pan. You don't really need to use this. You could just assemble it on a baking tray, but I kind of want it to be like rectangular, rectangular prism. So I'm going to grease this a little bit. I'm actually going to roll this out just slightly to make it a little bit longer for my loaf pan. We've got one layer in here. I'm going to spoon in my lentil mixture. By the way, this is just slightly warm. You don't really want to add it to your puff pastry if it's still piping hot because it's going to melt the butter. Press it in to all the corners. Okay, this last bit is optional, but if you're a fan of like the sweet, tart, savory flavor, I would recommend adding a layer of cranberry sauce to this. It's going to be really good. I don't actually have cranberry sauce, but I do have this, these cherry preserves, reduced sugar cherry preserves from Trader Joe's, and this is a little bit tart as well. I've heard lingonberry jam is also a good substitute for cranberry sauce. So I'm just going to add like, a, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of this. And you could totally add like grated green apples to the, the meatloaf mixture as well. I think that would be interesting. You could also use this lentil mixture um, to make like a vegan shepherd's pie if you're looking for another holiday entree idea. And we are going to do our best now to top it in a, an attractive way with this remaining sheet of pastry, puff pastry. You can also use phyllo dough if you can find uh, non-dairy phyllo dough. We'll just do it like this. I'm actually going to trim the overhang. You can just kind of like fold it over so you can make a border if you want, but I'm not actually the biggest fan of just having like big bites of puff pastry. I don't know why. So I'm going to trim it and I'm going to cook it like separately on a baking pan. Maybe I'll dust it with some cinnamon sugar. I'm just kind of tucking the extra puff pastry into the sides of the lentil loaf. So it looks kind of deformed now, but I feel like puff pastry after it cooks just always looks super rustic and sexy. So we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to cut a couple of uh, vents in the top for steam to escape. Here's what it looks like now. Um, it's very heavy. Ooh. Um, I actually have some aquafaba from the other day. I made like a chickpea curry. So I'm going to brush a little bit of that on here instead of egg wash. It's going to make it nice and shiny. Totally optional. You could use soy milk as well if you like, or a little bit of vegan butter, as if there's not enough oil in this already. But <laughs> There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to pop this into the oven. It's already preheated and cook it for, well, well, I'll tell you how long I cooked it for. I don't know yet. <laughs> Yay! Clean up time. <laughs> we are back. I baked this for 40 minutes and then it's been cooling for like 10 to 15 minutes. I just didn't want it to be blazing hot when I attempt to uh, extract it from this loaf pan. Um, it occurred to me too late that I should have just lined it with parchment paper so I could just lift it out, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Can you even see? The lighting is so weird. Also, this shirt is from Caitlin Shoemaker's collaboration with Vegetarian. I'll link it down below. It's so soft. It's so soft, it makes me fondle myself mercilessly. This is not going to be graceful. Just warning you. It worked. <laughs> it survived. I'm kind of proud of myself. Okay. Um, photographs first. Where there's photograph. It is a little lopsided, but... Yes! I feel like a serrated knife would work best for this, but I actually do not own one, believe it or not. We're gonna do a taste test. Just love the texture of the mushrooms and the, um, the seeds. But I've had a lot of like vegetable loaves or veggie burgers that are just really dry and crumbly, and I really think that adding in the soaked nuts or seeds, um, like the fat in those just keeps it super moist. If you have a lot planned for your holiday party menu and you want to cut down on some work the day of, you can totally prep the vegetable mixture the day before and then just wrap it in puff pastry and bake it 
um, a little bit before you are serving your dinner. I really like this. I um, My mom bought the field roast hazelnut cranberry roast that comes in puff pastry last month for Thanksgiving. And that was okay, but I, I definitely prefer like a homemade version better. So I almost ate this entire slice in like a minute <laughs> flat, if that's any testament to how dope I think this recipe is. So I'll have the I'll have the measurements linked down below. If you're curious, want to try it out, let me know what you think. Um, and I'll see you soon. Happy holidays. Bye.